What's going on? The first thing that I want to say is thank you to everyone who has bought a course or some training or booked a consult. Um, one of the things that has hit me is I need to focus more on you guys than the moist men. And that's what I'm gonna do going forward. If you hadn't noticed, I have taken some time off. And let me tell you what was going on. I was getting beat up on eBay, Craigslist, and Facebook. The lowball monsters were just, it was driving me crazy. I would put some up for $10,000 and they would come in and offer me six or even 5,000. And you know, this has been going on this whole year. This has been going on this whole year. So I needed to take a little time because I felt a little beat up and I'm glad I took the time because I'm probably gonna start taking more breaks throughout the year. And I may go back on break after this video. I, I really don't know, but that's what's been going on. I haven't been sick, nothing's happened to me. But one of the things that I have to restructure everything I'm doing, because the people who have bought courses, bought consults, you guys get it. You guys get it, because I'm getting ready to redo everything. Um, once again, there have been no live trainings. That's gonna resume October because I'm restructuring everything. And everyone, there's something new that's coming in October, so I'm working on that. And yeah, I mean, and also there's, I needed time to work on some things because I have two brokerage accounts opened up that was interesting. And I am now officially down to eight cars. I sold the Mercedes yesterday. So I've, you know, even though I've taken the time off from this YouTube channel, I haven't stopped working. I just took some time off because one of the things that I'm, I'm seeing here on the YouTube is a celebration of mediocrity and I refuse to participate. And that's one of the reasons that I get the responses that I get from the moist men, because I refuse to, like, once again, I was homeless, okay? I was homeless. So you don't get no more ass out than that. And I got all of these people who want me to sit and commiserate with them in their misery while they practice mediocrity why they practice those low information, you know, consuming these low information diets and I refuse to join them. And so this is what's gonna happen. Uh, I'm no longer selling stuff on eBay because eBay has just turned into a dumpster fire. I mean, the last six auction cycles, an auction cycle is Sunday to next Sunday, I've literally had people buy stuff and just disappear and not pay. I mean, it's, it's, once again, this is a sign of the economy. This is a sign of the global reset. This is a sign of what we're about to get into in this video. But yeah, once again, thank you, thank you, thank you to all of the people who have bought something. And I'm gonna work really hard to give you guys even more value for your money. Because like I said, I'm restructuring everything, I'm reworking on everything, and I'm getting ready to drop some new stuff because man, like I said, I haven't stopped working, but I just stopped posting on this main channel. And you know, I just kind of took a little break. And like I said, I might go back on break after this video, don't really know. Cause you know, every now and then I feel that you need to take a moment to reflect because, and something else I did, I took down the five videos because uh, once again, I was just going so far off course. I was just getting into a bunch of stupid stuff. And I, I realized that. And I was like, okay, you know what? We're going to stop that right now. We're going to reset. And we're going to come back bolder, deafer, and more stuff. And, you know, because, you know, I, I was just sitting here really, really looking at the landscape. Because 
This is one of the most perplexing things that happened. When I got into the car business, car prices were through the roof. And now that I'm out the car business, car prices have crashed. And like I said, I have eight cars left out of 31, eight cars. And um, one of the things that I've been doing to move them, like I put up some new ad and it didn't really work, but once again, we're restructuring everything. We're restructuring the channels. So that's what's been going on with me. You know, nothing bad has happened. It's just, I took a little break. All right, so let's get into this content. Whoo. You know, the government has been releasing a million barrels of oil, and this is why the price of gas has gone down. $10,000 student loan forgiveness. Crypto, Bitcoin has been struggling. Like it will go down to 1900. And at one moment it came back up to almost 25,000. And then bam, it crashed again. The stock market rallied, then it crashed again. Let me tell you what is going on. The Democrats have put the fix in. They're gonna maintain this economy until the elections. And once the elections are over, the economy is going to crash. And I'm talking hard. Crypto's gonna crash. The stock market's gonna crash. The housing, like this is something that's going on that's really interesting with housing. Uh, I posted up on the community tab, a house that's going in the West End where I used to live when I was in the boarding house for 4,300 bucks per month. But this house is fully furnished, which makes me think that this was a failed Airbnb. Once again, you can go to my community tab and you can see this house. The house is furnished and the West End is very close to Mercedes Benz Stadium. It's very close to the World Congress Center. And this is a sign. This, the house is tricked out. The house is tricked out. Go to my community page and you can see it. And this is something that I said was going to happen. Like the, the top end of Airbnb, I think that's going to be durable. And the lower end of Airbnb, but that middle is going to get crunched. And this is one of the reasons the middle is going to get crunched. There are too many people in real estate. It's not the corporate buyers. The corporate buyers, they're only buying in a few states. It is the mom and pop real estate investors that have crowded the real estate market. And I know in earlier videos, I said there would not be a crash. And I'm gonna still stay on point with that thought. However, there will not be a crash like 2008. 2008, the crash literally hit every state, every city, every county. What we're going to have is these areas that went through the moon. Atlanta is one, Atlanta is the hottest real estate investor market in the United States. I did not know that. And then Phoenix is another one. And these markets that got really hot where the investors were buying stuff left and right, these markets are going to crash. Now, the overall real estate market, because there are places, there's a place, I think it was Kansas, where you can still buy a house for 250. So the places that the remote workers didn't flood to, didn't push up the price, where the locals could not buy the houses, those places are going to be fine. But these hot spots are going to experience a crash. And it's going to be very, very interesting what's going on. And all right, and with the remote work, um, once again, you know, a lot of people's like remote work's not going anywhere. There's like, there's 30 million remote workers right now. I feel going forward in the next few years, that number is going to be reduced to 10 million. And if you don't, and one of the reasons that they're going to do this is this is a lot of people because corporate America isn't stupid. Corporate America knows how people get down. So a lot of people, instead of going back to office, they just gonna quit. 
Never in my life have I seen so many videos where these people, they appear to be intelligent, will quit their job, don't have another job lined up, don't have no savings. So already know what corporate America knows, that a lot of these people, instead of going back to the office, are going to quit. This is going to be a secret layoff maneuver. Instead of them having to lay off people, people are gonna lay themselves off because it's like, I'm not going back to the office. And this is something else too. A lot of reports are coming out about the great resignation and a lot of people have regretted quitting their last job because, you know, I've never done this. I've never been in a relationship and then I dumped my current girlfriend and moved on to another girl that I thought was better and it didn't work out. That's never happened to me. But a lot of people who quit their jobs are having regrets and this is something else too. A lot of people who quit their jobs and a lot of people who bought houses are having buyer's remorse because they were moving too fast and the prices were being pushed up and it was crazy. So a lot of people who um, quit their jobs and bought these houses are experiencing buyer's remorse. And what you're gonna see, because this is something else too. I have a friend that lives in New York and New York rent prices have gone back to where they were, which means that people are going back to New York. All of these places that, you know, a lot of people left California, a lot of people left New York, they went to Texas, they went to Florida. Uh, I was recently talking to someone who lives in Florida, who's thinking about moving away from Florida. So a lot of this pandemic, let's call it these pandemic causes of indices. These pandemic driven movements, these, you know, such as the great resignation, the housing prices, all this stuff. Now we're dealing with the real naked raw economy and the chickens are coming home to roost because I've been looking at this and I've been looking at this because, you know, here are my thoughts. Once again, um, people like, why do you hate crypto? Let me go ahead and plainly state my thoughts on crypto. I don't hate crypto. I hate the way you dumb motherfuckers act about crypto. There was a study that was done that 35% of millennials think that crypto is going to fuel their retirement. Now, during this crash that's coming, and it's going to be coming around Christmas time, because once the, once the elections are over, all this manipulation, all of this um, propping up is going to stop. It's just going to stop. There's leading economic indicators that are not putting out information until after the election. Um, there was someone that was talking about trying to get foreclosure information because foreclosures are spiking. They're spiking. And you cannot get reliable information because the Institute was at Biden's last speech. And for some reason, that information is coming out. So this is why I say the fix is in. Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, they're just doing what they can, hopefully to maintain power. And once the election is over, boom, everything's gonna crash. Because this is one of the reasons that I had to take some time off. Every time I put up a car, a computer, a cell phone, I get hit with no less than 25 scammer messages per item. I mean, it's, it's to the point where I'm just like, delete, 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 because it's like, kindly, sir, or what I really love is, because this is one of the reasons that I put my phone number in the ad. I put my phone number in there because a normal person's going to text me and it's gonna be a normal conversation. The scammers was like, hey, I wanna buy your car, get back to me at this email address, which lets you know automatically off the riff it's a scam, right? So I, I just got beat up by that. I mean, with eBay, and let me go ahead and tell you, I put up this ad on Craigslist. I got one computer, because like I said, I'm not selling on, on uh, eBay anymore. And I put in the ad, the price of this computer is this. 
if you send me a low ball offer, I'm going to cuss you out. It's in the ad. This is the price. And I've had many people and they get like, hey man, they ain't no need to be cussing me. I was like, I told your stupid ass what was gonna happen if you sent me this fucking low ball offer. See, with the crashing of the economy, cause see, we've had layers. Number one, we got high inflation, which is stressing people. And also the price of gas is going to explode. The price of food is going to explode. We're going to have a food shortage. So there's a lot of stuff that's just, it's building because like crypto right now it's being propped up because they don't want it to crash because once again, the powers that be knows that crypto is a very important thing to the fundamental marketplace. Like right now, I have all these people who are finding this video that I made about Carl Renfield and he's not a billionaire and they're like, you're confused. He did this, this, this. And one of the things that got me is the average person doesn't have a fundamental understanding of what it takes to become a millionaire and what it takes to become a billionaire. There are many people who have bought into the BS that this guy who was a cashier 2018, 19, 20, 21, 22, went from a cashier to a billionaire in four years. There's a lot now, you know, I don't believe it because I had a business and I've been on record about this, that I made a very high income but my storage auction business did not make me a millionaire. If I wanted to do the drop shipping, you know, like if I wanted to use earn revenue as the marker to say I was a millionaire, yeah, we, we did millions of dollars in sales, but once again, the technical definition of a millionaire is at the time that you declare your million, yourself a millionaire, you have a million plus in assets, not that over a period, like once again, there, there's this girl, there's this girl who quit, who's a teacher, she quit her job and she made a million dollars in three years and they classified her as a millionaire. Taxes, just paying taxes alone would negate that, you know, if, if this chick managed to hold on to every penny and not spend anything and just pay their taxes, the taxes alone would have knocked out the millionaire status. There's no way that this chick's a millionaire. She probably made 300,000. Because one of the things that I've seen on the internet is there's a there's a little elevation. Like if you did 250, they're gonna say you made 325. And that's kind of what I think of this situation because um, man, I am seeing so much that is going on that is letting me know that we are in for deep doo-doo. It is September. And I am going to make this prediction that this Christmas season, because once again, the elections are November 8th. And then six weeks later is Christmas time, right? Well, Christmas, well, Christmas, it will, the elections will be taking place during the beginning of the Christmas season. And as the economy drops, as we go through this economic free fall, because like, this is, like I said, this is one of the reasons I had to take a break because scamming is at an all time high and it's going to go up. You know, I'm pointing my finger like you do on the TikToks, that stupid things like, that's just stupid. But one of the reasons like I'm literally was getting hit up because if I, if I had to sit down and think about it, between the cars, eBay, Facebook, and YouTube, I was getting close to 100 negative messages per day. Between the scammy stuff, between the, the people trying to lowball me, between the moist men comments, a hundred of these messages a day, like to the point, I was just going to my email, delete, delete, delete. And I'm just sitting there like, okay, what happened to me? Cause I'm out here in these streets, conducting real business, making real moves. And I'm just sitting there like, 
man, they're releasing oil. They're propping up the crypto market. They're kind of sort of propping up the stock market because the Fed just kind of re did revert and went back to their repo act and that's going to make their stock market explode temporarily, temporarily. And um, once the elections are over, all of the, it's going to be just like what happened to the economy once all of the stimulus money left the economy. We see, you see what happened. You see what happened. And once again, I don't think we're going to have a widespread, you know, like in 2008 where the mortgage crisis literally impacted every state. We're going to have certain areas, all areas where we had massive appreciation because like, once again, go to the community page and you will see this. This is what I think is a failed Airbnb. Now, this is something else because I'm getting ready to start running ads probably October, November, maybe even December. I haven't decided yet. And so I've been watching a lot of ads and I'm seeing a lot of Airbnb, you know, how to get in the Airbnb business ads. There's one ad, you've probably seen it. We flip beds. That's a common one. There's another one. This guy's talking to Grant Cardone. You don't need money. You don't need credit, which is a lie. If you're trying to rent a spot, you're going to have to have good credit. If you have bad credit, you're not, you, or you have like an eviction on your credit. You're not going to be able to rent a property to put on Airbnb. And then there was a, there's like five Airbnb property, five Airbnb commercials. And I'm seeing a lot of that stuff. And if I was a real estate investor, I would be terrified of the moment of putting something on Airbnb. Because like I said, go ahead, go to my community page, see the house that I posted today. They want 4,300, because this house is furnished. And that just reeks of Airbnb. And it's like, why would you take a house that you had on Airbnb in Atlanta, in a location that's very close to Mercedes-Benz Stadium, that's very close to the Georgia World Congress Center, that's very close to downtown Atlanta, why would you take that house off of Airbnb and then try to rent it on Zillow? Because it's not making any money on Airbnb. Once again, you're gonna see a massive, like I personally know someone who they fortunately, they start selling their houses before the real estate market started slowing down because they got rid of most of them and they made money and they've got like two left and they're struggling to get rid of those kind of like me with these cars. So what you're going to see is the worst of the worst, because I think that once the Fed, because the Fed is kind of reversed, because I think you know the Fed's in cahoots with Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi. So they're going to kind of, because at one point they were taking money out of the economy. They were taking almost like 95 billion out of the economy. That was the, you know, because the, the plan got started really slow and now they've kind of gone back, which benefits the stock market. So stock market goes up, crypto kind of hangs around, the student loan forgiveness, all of this stuff is designed to get votes. That's what it's designed for. And once they get your vote, they don't need you for two years. And this is when it's just going to, it's all going to drop. It's all going to drop. And it's going to be terrible because this is one of the reasons like, you know, I'm in a pretty good financial situation, but like I got rid of the Mercedes because I didn't really know it. The Mercedes was $215 a month on my insurance policy, $215. And then it was $50 for parking. And then I was paying a thousand bucks because I was paying well, because once again, I was paying a lot more than I needed to because I wasn't going to pay on that car payment for 72 months, which is ridiculous. Um, my payoff date keeps shifting because I was like, sometimes I pay 5,000, sometimes I pay 10,000. And my payoff date had shifted to the point where it four, four going on five years early because I was just trying to get rid of it. But here's the thing. I didn't drive the car. 
and honestly really didn't like it you know I, the thing I liked about the car was it was a convertible and it's nice tooling around town in the convertible but I did not like the car and I got rid of it because there was parts of me that wanted to customize it and throw some nice rims on it and do some stuff to it and I was like just get rid of it just get rid of it and um, I paid 42 for it and CarMax offered me 35. Once again, all of the troubles that I have been trying to sell cars, and it's a convertible. It's a convertible. And I'm just sitting there like, just take that 35K and bounce, just bounce. And CarMax, it, I was literally there 25 minutes. Took me 25 minutes to sell that car and roll out with a check. I was like, yeah, because I, I didn't have that much left to pay down. So um, the majority of that 30, I, I think they offered me 35. I got a check for 31. So I only had 4,000 more to pay off of this car. So it was just the right time to get rid of it because um, one of the things is I love my X5 and I love my Porsche. And that's primarily, uh, the X5 is the daily driver. It's pretty much what I drive most of the time. And the Porsche I drive quite frequently. I don't have to worry about the battery dying. But that Mercedes, it would just sit, you know? You know, so having three cars, and like one of the things is that you have to get one of those trickle chargers to keep the batteries up, a, a battery tender, I think that's what they're called. And I didn't even want to deal with that because one of the things is I'm in the process of just getting rid of extra stuff. Because like I said, in the beginning, I'm getting ready to change stuff up. I'm getting ready to do stuff. I'm getting ready to reset things. And you know, I, I mean, you know, I gotta admit, I enjoyed my little break. I really enjoyed my little break. Uh, I was going to the gym. I was, you know, just kind of hanging out, watching football, just enjoying myself and there will be more of that but yeah man the economy is going to crash hard this is the way that i see it unfolding this is what i see happening and here's the thing and this is one of the things that you've got to stop being the common man the common man is going to get fucked this is who's going because right like all right i already put this out here if you do not have significant assets above and beyond what you need to live on i.e your salary there's nothing you can do to protect your money from this recession and inflation there's nothing you just got to bend over and take it because um one of the things that i have done is american express has it, it's like 1.7% and Capital One has a 1.9%. I just moved a bunch of money to an American Express savings account because instead of, you know, I wasn't really getting nothing from Chase, so I'm getting something. And also, I bought some stock recently. I bought some Apple stock and I'm getting ready to, because like I said, I needed to decompress because I haven't even started day trading. I just really signed into my Swab account the other day and I just signed into my Cobra account this morning. So in October, like, you know, I'm just gonna let the rest of the month go. Like I said, I may go back on break after this video and then just start off clean and fresh in October because one of the things that's happening, cause like I got a video that's gonna be coming on the Corporate Trader channel going to be deep for those of you who want to start an LLC to start your trading journey. Uh, it's going to be deep. But man, um, I really see 2023 being the year of the murder hornet. It's going to be a rough year. It's going to be, it's going to be bad. It's going to be really, really bad. And here's the thing. If you have a business, and you're out here hustling, and you're out here making moves, you're out here killing dragons, you're gonna be okay. But if you just have a job, and you're not trying to do anything to, to, to deploy the do more principle, because like, you know, when I 
had my first business, GC Solutions. I worked my business and I kept my job. Because this is another thing that I'm seeing. Because once again, I'm getting ready to run ads and they're gonna be very different because I've seen ad after ad, literally a few weeks after joining our program, Jenny was able to quit her nine to five or Bob was able to quit their nine to five. And I'm like, what kind of crap is this? Because you wanna know one of the reasons that I did not quit my job when I started my business? I didn't know how long that was gonna work. So you can go ahead and get into these income programs and like literally, I'm almost thinking about starting a channel and call it Income Opportunity Testing Site, where I would just buy these opportunities and actually see if they work. Because once again, I'm very, very much aware of the ads because if someone's running an ad month after month after month, they're making money because there's no reason that someone's gonna keep running ads and running ads because like what I do is I look at the ad, I sign up for the offer, and then I go to their landing page and I see how much traffic they're getting to their landing page. And there's some people, I can just tell by the quality of the commercial that they're not making a lot of money. And when they get to the landing page, they're getting like 5,000 people hitting. Because see, when you want to run ads, and this is one of the things, because there's a girl, um, she's running um, an ad of like how to go to TikTok, create a TikTok channel versus paying for ads. Now, I know people who run ads quite effectively, and I know one guy, and he's in a totally different niche, and he spends, for every dollar he spends, he gets 10 back. And if you have the right program, you know, and this is something that's gonna be part of the intellectual property school, because once I start running ads, because one of the things is, I don't offer you guys any training on something that I haven't done. This is one of the reasons that I signed up for the Wells Fargo secured credit card to see how the program worked. And I'm kind of pissed because I had locked up $50,000 for a damn near two years and they just closed the accounts because they didn't like my business model. So, and then here's something else. Uh, some of the people that I was working on their credit, uh, some of them had already had secured credit cards. They're having issues getting their money back. So I feel that this is another indicator of the economy crashing. Another indicator because once right now, credit is quite liberal. We, we don't have a credit crunch. If you have a decent FICO score and you don't have a lot of your inquiries, pretty much you can apply for a car loan, you can apply for uh, credit cards, you can even apply for a mortgage and pretty much get it. So we don't have a, a credit crunch at the moment. I do feel that that's going to occur in 2023. Right now there is no credit crunch. This year I got like 15 new credit cards and essentially uh, there are more and more fintechs and also just to give you this um, observer, observation I have checking accounts with Mercury Bank and Mercury Bank is now offering a credit card but here's the thing it's not a it's a charge card it's not a credit card now what do I mean by that Divi, which I have, is a charge card. Terpargo, which I have, is a charge card. And um, this new card, because I went ahead and emailed them, and it's a charge card, it's not a credit card. All of these FinTechs have raised enough money to have charge cards, cards that must be paid in full at the end of the month, because see, if you're paying in full at the end of the month, there's way less risk to the banks because you don't have this balance that you've had for a year or two because you must make your car hold and if they're gonna have a problem with you, they're gonna find out pretty quickly when you don't pay that payment. So right now, that's the big rage and I'm actually gonna do a video about that because I mean, I'm gonna be straight up. If you're gonna have a charge card, American Express is the way to go. Why? You get benefits, you get tangible benefits. 
because Divi, uh, their rewards are garbage. Tobargo, their rewards are garbage. And I have a feeling that the Mercury credit card, their rewards will be garbage. And like, I also have the Carrot card, which is another charge card. You know, once again, it's, um, doesn't, if you use your credit cards like a debit card, these charge cards are fine, but for long-term bigger projects, they can be problematic. So I don't see a liquidity crisis that expect that happened in, you know, until 2023. And this is one of the reasons that I am getting ready to go ahead and apply for some business credit cards. And I'm not even going to be using my personal credit cards. Matter of fact, I sat down and thought about it and everything that has a lower credit limit, like 20, 25,000, I'm getting rid of those. I'm just going to close those accounts if they don't raise my credit limit. And I'm going to apply for more because um, my, my latest credit card was American Express and they gave me a $40,000 credit limit. So I'm getting ready to reshuffle my credit profile. If you know, pretty much it'll take me until next year, but my lowest credit limit is going to be 40,000 once I get done, because here's the thing. I have a whole bunch of credit cards, right? Whole bunch of credit cards, but I, long as I keep my oldest credit card, I can close a bunch of them and it's not really going to make a big difference in my credit score. So I'm fully aware of that. And I'm just getting ready to stage my credit report for the future. Because like I said, uh, this is going to be part of the new training because uh, I've got some hot stuff that I'm going to be putting out some really, really hot stuff. But once again, guys, just get yourself ready, brace yourself for after the election and when the economy crashes hard. I think this is going to be the worst Christmas on record ever, ever. So might be going back on break. I might start producing more videos for this channel. I don't know. And this is the only channel that I took a break on. The other ones I kept producing content. 